The NSA has trillions of telephone calls and emails in their databases that they've collected over the last several years. Let's bring in Glenn Greenwald. Let's bring in right now the Guardian's Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. We are joined by the journalist who broke his story, Glenn Greenwald. These systems allow analysts to listen to whatever emails they want, whatever telephone calls, browsing history, Microsoft Word documents. It's an incredibly powerful and invasive tool. Israel did, I don't think this is disputed, offer to have the ships uh, inspected. We just had on 10 minutes of uninterrupted pro-Israeli propaganda filled with falsehoods. The blockade is one of the most brutal and inhumane blockades we've seen in the last generation. When you send your military for six straight decades into other countries to bomb them, kill their children and women and innocent men. We but you know dictators. Like, you know yeah, you take responsibility for your actions. How can you be a citizen of the United States, the country that has generated more violence and militarism in the world over the last five or six decades, and say, look at those people over there, they are incredibly violent. We play a significant role in what has been happening in the Middle East because we've well, been interfering and dominating that region in order to have access to the... I wasn't talking about Israel, violence. So. The most powerful factions in the society, political and, and financial factions, have committed literally the most egregious crimes that, that exist. And in the case of Wall Street, precipitating a worldwide financial collapse that destroyed the economic security for literally billions of people based upon systemic fraud. Not a single one of the people responsible for any of those massive crimes have been held accountable in any way of any kind. Once you start saying you think it's permissible for the government to cross these lines in certain circumstances, or that it's okay for them to violate these rights when it's applied to those groups of people over there, once you start making exceptions to that extremism, by definition, those rights no longer exist. By definition, those, those guarantees are illusory and you no longer believe in them. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for coming tonight, and thank you as well to the Greater Los Angeles Chapter of CARE for inviting me to speak. I, I'm really sorry that I'm not able to be there in person as I had planned to be and hoped to be ha if we had a government that could be relied upon to protect basic press freedoms, I would be there with you tonight. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of a government, and so I'm not, but I'm nonetheless delighted that the chapter's organizers and leaders uh, nonetheless asked me to speak to you by video. So I am there with you in spirit and really glad to be able to have this conversation with you tonight, even though I can't be there in person. I have spoken a lot at CARE chapters over the last several years, different chapters around the country, as well as the national organization. And one of the reasons I'm so eager to do that is because as somebody who has worked on civil liberties abuses for many years, and particularly in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks, I am truly grateful for the work of the handful of organizations who have stood really firm and steadfast in defense of our basic constitutional protections as they've been under continuous assault from numerous directions. And there really is no group in the United States that has been more steadfast and fearless and whose work has been more important, even under the most trying circumstances and under the most vicious attacks, including by their own government, than CARE. And that includes not only the national organization, but in many instances, as I've come to see over the past couple of years, sometimes as importantly, if not more so, the local and state chapters, which really deal with the community and people in the community whose rights are being assaulted in a one-on-one -on -one basis and provide crucially needed services to protect those rights that would otherwise be unavailable. And so I really feel honored at all times when CARE asks me to attend an event, when I'm able to interact with the lawyers and the employees and the volunteers and the directors of any organization having to do with CARE. There's another reason that I'm really delighted to have been asked to speak to you tonight and to have been able to say yes, and that is that I always uh, receive such warm and really gratifying accolades every time that I appear at a care event. And I'm sure tonight is going to be no different. And I just want to share with you a couple of the warm reviews that I received um, and that I, uh, when people learned that I was going to be speaking with you tonight. So the first one that I want to share with you um, is this one here. Uh, which the camera can zoom in on. Um, as you can probably see, uh, it proclaims me a very noble award, which is Care's Useful Idiot. There's a little picture of me underneath, and it's from the right-wing group, Accuracy 
in media, and the first paragraph pretty much summarizes the tenor of the article. It's from just a month or so ago. It says, Glenn Greenwald, the hard left activist who fancies himself a journalist, is scheduled to speak next month before a terrorist-friendly agitprop group that masquerades as a Muslim civil rights organization. In a big propaganda coup that will, that will allow CARE to achieve even more mainstream credibility, Greenwald will keynote the November 16th Faith in Freedom ba Banquet of CARE's Greater Los Angeles Chapter. And then there's another one from CNS News, which is a right-wing Christian organization. And the headline here is, Glenn Greenwald, journalist who reported on NSA surveillance leaks to address Islamic event. I'm sure that frightened many of the followers and readers of that organization. And then the final one, which I actually think is my favorite one, the one that I felt most honored by, um, appeared in Front Page Magazine, the um, repugnant rag of, of the activist David Horowitz, and it's by Robert Spencer, the uh, anti-Muslim bigot. And the headline here is very subtle. Um, it says, does Glenn Greenwald hate America? And there's a picture of me underneath. Um, and then again, the first chapter, the first paragraph is quite instructive. It says, the Los Angeles chapter of the Hamas Link Council on America Islamic Relations has announced that Glenn Greenwald, the far left journalist who publicized Edward Snowden's information, will be its keynote speaker at its Orwellian named Faith in Freedom Dinner on November 16th. And it goes on to say that this is not the first time that I've appeared at a CARE event. Um, and then it ends by saying, and so as he prepares to hobnob with members of the notorious Hamas-linked Muslim Brotherhood front group CARE, the question must be asked, does Glenn Greenwald hate America or does he just act as if he does? And the reason that I consider those accolades to be so gratifying is because I feel that as a civil liberties uh, defender that I would not really be doing my job if I didn't earn the animus of people like that. But what really is important to me about those kinds of reactions, and I'm certain that there are people from those organizations following this event and ready to write down whatever words I said that they can twist out of context. What really makes me genuinely, in all seriousness, happy about those kind of reactions is that it just underscores for me the kind of demonization that American Muslims are routinely subjected to even to this day, and underscores the truly important need for organizations like CARE in the greater Los Angeles area to be as supported as possible and to protect the civil liberties of Muslims and to protect law-abiding American Muslims from these kinds of defamatory attacks. And I like having that cause underscored for me and the importance of it. It really just emboldens me to want to do this work even further.